The next part is uh, torquing down the uh, rod nuts. Um, they're torqued down to 36 Newton meters, um, which is what I have my torque wrench set to here. Well, I'm actually going to lower this down to about 19 Newton meters. So I know I can make that last part because that's what Yamaha wants. So I brought those up to 19 newton meters um, because Yamaha makes a special note in the manual that once you start not to stop and to com apply continuous torque to get to the 36 newton meters. So hopefully we can get that here. And bring the other ones up. Bring it back down to 19. Back up to 36 and do the continuous tightening. See, I didn't like that one, so we're gonna go back down to the sluice. You mess that one up, gotta start over. Okay. So the rod nuts are torqued down now and still turn nice and freely. So that's ready to go. Okay, so if you remember, the um, left side of the engine is this side and the right side is this side because it's backwards. Um, and of course, remember these go inward like that into those slots. Inward like that because this is the right one. Go ahead and put this uh, plate back on for now. Make sure we don't lose a spring or something like that. Just hand tighten them up. Okay, so the first thing that needs to go in is this um, bearing clip, I guess they call it, that goes into this uh, main groove right here. And we'll bring the shaft back in. Again, lining it up there with the shifter dogs. And this on this side, and it's in there. And that's all there is to it. So once this uh, seal comes in, we'll be ready to seal up the crank. And of course, that just uh, this is the old one that's junk. Um, of course, that just goes right there. Okay, so up next is time to join the case halves. Um, but first we have to do some prep work. The first thing you need to do is make sure you have your dowel pins where they need to go. You can see on this, the FZ1, uh, 2004 model anyway, there's one right here, one right here, and then one right here in the back. Um, the next thing I need to do is clean all the surfaces that I'm gonna put the case sealant on um, with, for many grease to make sure it doesn't, uh, just make sure it sticks well. I just use some alcohol on paper towel. Also, you want to remove any excess uh, case sealant that may have been on there from the past. You don't have to get all of it, but you know any excess, you want to go ahead and get that off there. Okay, so once you got all those cleaned, it's time to go ahead and put your case seal on. Um, be sure to really read the manual and make sure you're putting a case seal on where it's supposed to be and where it's not supposed to be. One note about manuals, always make sure you read the uh, notes that are generally located at the bottom of the page. Um, there's usually some pretty important stuff in there for putting parts in. Uh, like this engine, for example, actually has case sealant on these uh, inner journals here. I'm not sure why exactly, maybe it's rigidity. Um, Maybe it's to seal it for something. Uh, it's hard to say, but Yamaha thought it was important, so it's probably important. Oh, one last thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is you could put the new seal in um, for the oil seal here after too, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in now because it's easier. Um, one thing I always do is put a little bit of oil here on the uh, inside of the seal. That again is just um, help it during startup and 
as the engine's breaking or you know getting oil everywhere. There we go. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and get that case sealant on here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this case sealant on. Um, in the manual it says don't put it within two to three millimeters of the crank journals. So probably about right there at the bolt hole, but we'll start here at the back anyway. So Yamaha has this whole deal, um, but you wanna be real careful around this hole right here as it's an oil hole. Oil hole. We'll go ahead and start putting a little bit of sealant on here. It really doesn't take much. So in these big areas, I generally come in here and smooth it down by hand and remove some excess as well. original case sealant. So right here you can see this channel, that's an oil gallery, so you don't want to get it down in there. So that was too close there. It's okay, just wipe it off. So I'm just putting on the thinnest uh, layers possible near these bearing journals where Yamaha calls for it. And then I'm going back in here at this uh, exacto and just making sure there's none in the um, holes. This is where the oil goes for your uh, main bearing journals here. You definitely don't want that stopped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around so it'll be easier for me to get to on that side. Okay, there we go. Um, one little tip when you put the lid back on here, if you uh, squeeze it out some, it'll be much more likely to cooperate with you on the next one, so it'll give you something to pull off on. There we go. Okay, so up next we're gonna put the other side of the case on. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that real quick off camera. I don't have room for it up here, so I'll be right back. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and join the case halves. Um, before I uh, do that, I just like to, you know, get everything quick, check, make sure everything looks right. Yep, looks pretty good. Uh, got my seal in, got my uh, three, those things. All right, time to put the case half on. There it is. It really should just go right together like that. Um, if you get a bunch squishing out, you probably t put too much on. So now it's time to go ahead and uh, start putting the bolts back in and torquing them. 
Okay, so it's time to go ahead and put the bolts in the engine and torque it all down now that we got the case halves together. Um, one thing I always do is print out the uh, manual so I have the torque order because on most of these engines it's pretty complicated, not something you're going to be able to remember. Um, also, make sure to oil the threads of the bolts. That way you get a proper torque setting. And there's a whole lot of reasons and great videos on YouTube. I think uh, ABE might do one showing the difference between lubricated and unlubricated bolt torque. All these bolts are used anyway and they have a lot of oil on them, but just to be on the safe side, especially on the big crank bolts, we're gonna go ahead and uh, put a little bit of oil on those. So one thing you'll notice is these engines have these kind of weird looking custom bolts. Uh, those of course go right here and right here. 